with Claire. Now today as it's Halloween I'm going to be making some soul cakes. Now these were cakes that people would make this time of year because uh, children and people from the community would go souling and that means they'd go from door to door a bit like uh, present day uh, children do with trick-or-treating and they would go around sort of collecting sort of money, arms and sort of charitable things and food. Um, the householder would give them a soul cake in return for that person praying for a departed loved one uh, <clears throat> to get their souls out of purgatory. So that was the whole idea of them, they actually represented a soul in purgatory. Um, today with these ingredients I'm, um, I'm going to make a recipe based on a recipe from a book from 1604, um, Lady Eleanor Fetter Place. Um, she was alive during the Elizabethan period and cooking then and she actually put her recipes together in one place. Um, it said, the recipe said, take flour and sugar and nutmeg and cloves and mace and sweet butter and sack and a little ale balm. Beat your spice and put in your butter and your sack cold, then work it well all together and make it in little cakes and so bake them. If you will, you may put in some saffron into them and fruit. Um, the recipe I'm making today is a modern version of that recipe which is actually from the Good Cookery program from the Food Network. And we have half a cup of ale, I'm using Murphy's Irish Red Beer because that's actually what I have in the house at the moment and I'm not a very good Tudor housewife, I haven't made my own ale this week so sorry to let you down with that. A teaspoon of yeast and I just I buy the uh, fast acting yeast because I've got a bread maker so that's what I have in the house. Two cups of flour, a third to half a cup of sugar, quarter teaspoon each of nutmeg, cloves and mace says the recipe but I haven't got any mace so I've actually done my own thing. I've, I've grated some nutmeg, I've uh, pounded up some cloves uh, and I've chosen to do ginger because I really love ginger biscuits and, and the ginger sort of flavour in things this time of year so I've used ginger instead of mace. You could also put cinnamon in or, or any of the kind of spices that you perhaps put in mulled wine would be good to add in. Um, a tablespoon of butter, which I haven't got out of the fridge yet, but I'm actually going to use margarine, I'm afraid. And it says sweet butter in the recipe, so don't use a salted one, just use a, a sort of general one. And then it says half a cup of dry sack, which is a dry sherry. Now I haven't got any dry sherry, so I'm having to put in a sort of sweeter sherry, so I've got half a cup there. Now the first thing that the recipe says to do is to use ale balm and that is actually what um, a housewife would be able to scoop that sort of the froth off her um, ale that she was making herself but the version that we can kind of make which is based on that is to use the half a cup of the ale, yeah, ale and the teaspoon of yeast and to mix them together And then to just put that aside for a few minutes, just to kind of combine, to mix. And while that's doing its stuff over there, the recipe says in a large bowl, so I've got my favourite mixing bowl, to combine the flour and the sugar. Going to do that, that's the flour gone in. So that was two cups of flour and this a third to half a cup of sugar going in. So I'm just going to combine them. Now you might want to use caster sugar because it's less granulated 
but here where I live, you can't really get caster sugar, it's just a granulated salt. You can either get granulated or icing sugar, so I don't really want to use icing sugar. So I've mixed those well, and then I'm going to make a well to put my ale balm or my fake ale balm in. It's gone kind of frothy. I'm just going to give it a bit more of a stir before I put it in. It'll all get mixed in nicely when I actually combine the ingredients. So I'm just going to put that in. And it says to leave that unmixed for a while, just put it to one side. So I'm just going to put that to one side for a few minutes while I get the next set of ingredients ready. Now in this bowl I've got a tablespoon of what's supposed to be butter, sweet butter, but I've actually got margarine. And I'm going to blend in the spices. So if you remember, I chose to do nutmeg. I put in about two cloves and just a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg and it's supposed to be mace and I, but I chose to use ginger. So I'm putting that in with my margarine. Just trying to get as much as possible out. So I'm going to blend that together. Give it a good mix. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my flour and my ale bar that I've got here. And it says, the recipe says, just to cover the ale bar with some of the flour and sugar mixture. I'm just doing that. And then, to add the creamed butter, you could actually do that even better than I have. But it's well mixed. Get as much of that as possible. I have got clean hands, I promise. And then it's simply blending the ingredients together. So I've kind of mixed that together, it's not looking brilliant at the moment, but I've sort of combined that margarine and the spices with the flour and the ale bar. I'm now going to slowly add what was called the sack, or what we call sherry today. So I'm going to add a bit at a time, obviously that will moisten the mixture, just to get those floury bits at the bottom, a bit more. Oh, it smells really good. Mixture of sherry and ale sort of uh, coming up from the mixture along with the spices. It's looking very moist now. I think we're going to have to add more flour later. You might want to do this with an electric mixer as it is quite hard work. So I've just been working hard at mixing those. It's quite an elastic -y kind of mixture because of the yeast. I'm now going to add the dried fruit and you can use any dried fruit. You could use a mixture of raisins and sultanas. I guess you could even put like dried cranberries in or fruit peels, anything you kind of want really. So that's, it says three quarters of a cup to a cup of dried fruit. You can use um, dried fruit to decorate soul cakes as well. If you look for um, on Google, if you uh, Google soul cakes, you'll see some recipes that have got 
the fruit actually decorating the top in sort of like a cross kind of symbol. So you could actually save the fruit to just decorate the top. But I'm mixing it in. And Lady Eleanor said also about adding saffron. Saffron is a very expensive uh, spice. Here, we get it a lot in Spain because it's used in paella. Uh, so you buy these little boxes of it and I'm just going to put, I'm going to put a fair pinch of it in. About that much, I think. I'll mix that in. Now this is when the recipe really calls for you to sort of make a judgement. Because I'm going to need to roll this out. And of course that's going to be very messy at the moment, so I'm going to have to add more flour. Obviously if your consistency is too dry, then you can add more sherry. But I'm going to be adding more flour to it. And really that's going to depend on your ale and your sherry, really. Different ones are going to be, going to give a different consistency. It's getting better. and go for it. I'm just going to knead it a bit like a bread, bread dough just to get it how we want it. Still needs more flour. So I don't want it sticking to the table when I'm cutting it out. Right, I've just floured my clean kitchen table. And I've got the dough here. So all the time, if, it, if it's too sticky, if it's sticking to you completely, then keep adding more flour. Or if it's falling apart into bits, then you'll want to add more sherry. So I'm just going to roll it out now. I'm going to flour my rolling pin so I don't get it sticking. Now, my cookery teacher is always told me to only roll in one direction. It's never to go forward and back. So there's a tip for you. What you can do really as thick as you want. And then I'm going to just use a fluted cutter. You could obviously use whatever kind of cutter you want. You I suppose make them into shapes but I would think with the fact that they rise your shapes might go slightly in this. <laughs> I'm going to put them on some grease proof paper. Now I've done one tray of them I'm just about to roll out the remaining mixture to make a few more. Um, I don't know whether I've done them the right thickness or not, but we'll see how we go. I'm not worried about their shapes. They're so elastic um, that I'm sure the shape's going to change anyway as they cook. The recipe says to now just leave them for 5 to 10 minutes before they go into the oven. Um, so I'm going to leave them to rest in a warm place for 5 to 10 minutes while I preheat the oven. Um, the oven is um, 375 degrees Fahrenheit, gas mark 5, 190 degrees centigrade. So I'm going to put that on to preheat while these have a rest. The oven has preheated to 190 and my salt cakes have been resting. Um, so I'm now going to put them in. Now the recipe says about 15 minutes. Now I always like to sort of err on the side of caution so I'm going to put them on for 20 and then check them at around the 15 minute mark just to see how they're doing. Ovens vary, so you know it really is a case of see what happens. So there we go, and we'll see what happens at the end. It's about 20 minutes in the oven, um, and they're nice and firm. 
Now, the recipe says makes about a dozen. Um, mine made twice that. I've got another tray of them as well. So I obviously used a lot smaller cutter, and mine was sort of more like cookies rather than cakes. So I'm just putting them on a wire rack. Ouch, that hot. Cool. And then I'm just sprinkling them while they're still warm with just some sugar, just some granulated sugar. And then when I get the trick-or-treaters at the door later, as well as sweets, they can have some soul cakes and be taken back to the medieval times. And I'm sure they will enjoy them. So there you go, medieval or Tudor style soul cakes. Hope you'll join me again. Bye bye.